Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I think we're going to have quite an interesting show. There's been many issues out there that I'm sure you'd like to get us some sort of a feedback from a group like we've uh, assembled here today, including myself. I'm talking about uh, Fred Stewart. Uh, you've seen Fred here on the show before. And also uh, Matt, Matt, uh, Reverend Matthew Cummings. You've seen mm -hmm. Matt here before. And uh, we're going to talk about current events today. I mean, I'm sure everyone is sort of having discussions about the, the issues back east in Carolina and the shootings and this, that, and the other. That's the NAACP thing, mm -hmm. situation where the, the, the presidency was was done by a young, a young lady, and that was another issue that I think there was some concerns. And, and I'm sure the, with these guys that I have sitting over here, they would have some response. But what we're going to do primarily up front is that we want to talk about Father's Day for a moment. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Father's Day. Very, very important. Uh, we're not fathers across the board, but in all due respect, as you can see, you've got three black men here. We're all, we're all Americans, but we've got three black men there. Mm -hmm. There's a major concern about um, the lack of fatherly love, if you will, from, from our young uh, black males mm -hmm. within our society. And I think there's a responsibility that we're going to take on and talk about this issue mm -hmm. because there needs to be a solution and, and a concern. In most cases, it, it's been done all in a negative way in many ways, i.e. gang. You know, first thing that comes up to a person's mind is the, the whole issue that they're black automatically, you know, so to speak. So we want to talk a little bit about that. But again, first off, I'm just going to go around the table. I've introduced these guys, and, and I would like for each one of them to say a little bit about Father's Day. And, uh, but maybe before we go into that, we got, we got Pastor here. we got Reverend Cummings here. Uh, obviously, he's definitely here. I'd like for him to say a, a word of prayer, if you will, Sure. for, uh, for Father's Day, yeah, for, sure. uh, for, for all fathers, including women, because a woman today could be a father. Well, certainly. Issue that we are, just like a Mother's Day, a, a male could be a mother. Sure. Okay? Uh, sure. From Cummings. Well, Lord, we just thank you for this day, and uh, just as Abba Father, we honor you, Heavenly Father, for just uh, being our dad spiritually. We also, Lord God, I ask that you would bless every father here in uh, the Portland metropolitan area right now in the name of Jesus. And uh, Father God, that you would strengthen them and Father God, that you'd keep them strong. And Lord God, that as this day is celebrated, Lord God, in particular, we pray for young black fathers, Lord God, whom are doing all they can in this most uh, challenging time, Father God, to be the positive role model that you have, Lord God, for uh, this community. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much, Reverend Coming. Okay, let's go around the room. Fred, let's, what about your dad? It's Father's Day to you. How did, how did, how did you spend your time with Father? Well, I, you know, I celebrate it like I always do. I called my dad and wished him happy Father's Day, so they will have a little bit of a chat with my father today. My father's not doing as well as he used to because, you know, he had a stroke about five years ago. So. Well, you have, so you can see so the he's, eyes. Go, he's, not, he's not as uh, cognizant as he, he is, but he's still here, so I'm very lucky. Still have my dad around. You said he was a sergeant major, too, at one point, in the yeah, Army, right? Yeah, he made it all up to E-9 and, and, and the Army. So uh, the benefit of uh, still having my dad around is uh, the stroke has knocked him back to the 1970s and 80s. So. Yeah, right. My father feels that he's uh, he's still in the army. He's so. still sergeant major. Yeah. So whenever you deal with him, you, you always have to have that in mind that, okay. uh, according to him, he's still, you know, the top sergeant. Okay. Well, happy Father's Day, Mr. Stewart. Appreciate that very much. Matt, what do you think? What do you say, Matt? Mine's a little bit different. My father's been dead since 1997. A good man, an educated man. Uh, worked in local government back in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I do say happy Father's Day to all fathers. And having having my father gone. Uh, I know how much it is important for a father to be there. Well, Even good, more. Good, good. And that mom is here now, right? Yes, my so mom's here. She's got here. that baton now. Yes, she does. Okay, she's I'm got sure both. She carries it pretty yeah, She carries it very well. <laughs> hey, Bruce, tell us about your father. Well, my father, you know, he, he worked in the oil field back in Texas. and But before that, we, we had farms back in Louisiana, if mm -hmm. you will. And so we were a very close family back in those days, you know, obviously, because people had to really work together and this, that, and the other. But he was quite a guy. He really was a, was a heck of a guy. And, 
and uh, taught me well. In fact, that's where I pick up most of my values from him. And uh, now today, here now, there, there are a number of the fathers that I relate to. These are my sons. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my sons not here with us today, but, but I've got three others who are, who are neat guys and take care of their families and all, and, and uh, they're, very, they're very loving fathers at night. And um, so this means a lot to me as far as Father's Day and to all the other folks that I've known that are fathers today. But again, the concern that I have, the major concern that I have, you know, as a black American, mm -hmm. are these, young, these other young blacks who are sitting up there in the criminal justice system uh, for whatever reason, they're there, and they, they are so bare, they're bearing childhood, and they've mm. got family that are outside, mm -hmm. and uh, some don't have family. And so the, the idea is that I'm always thinking about what can we do, if you will, to, to turn it around a bit, if you will. And so, so I say happy Father's Day to those guys who are maybe looking at TV today, who are sitting up there incarcerated and say, hey, there is hope. Mm -hmm. And do give your son a call, or give, give, give the, give the uh, maybe the, the lady of the, uh, uh, who bore your child, and to recognize that Father's Day is today and is very important. Uh, I might add too that uh, there's there another concern that I have here in the Portland metropolitan area, is that uh, I was doing a number of things about Father's Day in the past, and and there was a concern about um, Father's Day <clears throat> uh, that on Father's Day, in all due respect, the the gay community had the Gay Pride Day on Father's Day, and I approached them and said to them that hey, look, if you would not have a gay pride day on that day hmm. and leave it as Father's Day, I'd be more glad to march in the parade. Hmm. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. Hmm. So I even say to those folks that too, that uh, we need to really recognize what Father's Day, how meaningful it is, and how, how special it is. Is it gay pride today today? No. Did they, they march today? I no, they, it was last no, week. It was, it was last week, but yeah. I'm just saying in the past, you know, it, mm, yeah. it landed on Father's Day. And so it's a very important piece. And I, I'm just saying, you know, it's, that particular day is very precious, just like Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. that, sometimes that's a little different. If you, when one says Mother's Day, everybody recognizes mom. But mm -hmm. you've got to recognize the male portion of, the, of, of that, that day. Very, sure. very important. Very, very important. So anyway, since you asked me the question, again, Happy Father's Day to you. Mm, Matt, you. Happy Father's Day. Okay, and Happy Father's Day to you. Okay, good. Now what we're going to do is that um, we're going to spend a little time about some of the issues that... Um, that were, were, were out here over the last week, for that matter. You know, mm. we had the NAACP piece. Now, let, let's respond a little bit about that. And, and the, the, the issue was, uh, was it Tacoma, Washington, right? Was it? No, Spokane. 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 Spokane, Washington. Yeah. And uh, she, was a, she was elected president of the, the local chapter. Right. And then there was the uproar, you know. And, and, um, and so uh, that was quite an issue. And there's been a lot of talk about this piece. But... On that issue, are you familiar with that, Fred? Oh yeah, okay. very familiar. What do you think about that? Should she should she have been she should have retained the presidency of, of that organization? I think so, uh, only because one, I I'm cynical. I don't believe that uh, the people that she worked with didn't know mm -hmm. that she was a white girl. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about her uh, appearance that uh, made me think that she was, um, you know, mixed. I mean. It's not that we know some mixed girls that don't look, you know, about like her, but the girl sounded like a white girl. She looked like a white girl to me, and I don't really believe that her board um, in Spokane uh -huh. didn't know. And mm -hmm. uh, she was very effective, by all counts. Everybody in the community has, has talked about her her work over the last ten years. She's more effective than the leadership we've had here in Portland. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an argument that. You know, well, you know, we got Joanne Bauman right now, but there's got to be a place for that girl here in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard of. You compare to what she did and what's happened in South Carolina, I'd take a thousand of hers, you know, over you know one of what we just went through down in South South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matt, any any feedback on that? Awesome. Well, you know, I happen to have been up. Uh, finishing up a ministry trip up in Colville, Washington. It was in Spokane mm -hmm. when that uh, whole thing broke out. And uh, the media went after her with a vengeance because she had been effective as far as in the Spokane area. Mm -hmm. And not only was she, of course, a part of the NAACP local chapter, but she was also uh, tied in with a citizens group that was looking over the affairs of the police mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the city council and things of that nature uh -huh. up in Spokane. Uh, 
So when news media went after her, uh, there was a real move to remove her from her position. So it wasn't just about uh, uh, being a white girl uh, pretending to be black, which is what's been mm-hmm. put in that. But there were some other things that were behind the scenes to get rid of her because she was an effective uh, mm-hmm. advocate for uh, the end of ACP, mm-hmm. as well as for issues for poor people in Spokane. Mm-hmm. And most people miss that. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you we've had a gay person act straight in leadership in mm-hmm. Spokane and Portland. Mm-hmm. We've had a straight person act gay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I yeah, mean, we've yeah. had it both ways. Yeah. I mean, I ain't seen as right mm-hmm. that people deceive others. But uh, goes back to like what he said. I mean, this woman was very effective, mm-hmm. uh, more effective than black leadership here in Portland. She was the one thing you can say about her, from what I've been learning from people, is she was definitely not a Rolodex Negro. Now, <laughs> I would rather have her than all of the Rolodex <laughs> Negroes we got here in Portland, and we got a lot of them. I won't get in the Rolodex. Oh I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll ask Tom then when I get through it. <laughs> yeah. You know what Rolodex <laughs> Negroes are. You know, you know what they're gonna say. <laughs> You know what they're going to do, oh, you know, right, okay. they're going to pray on Martin Luther King Day and they're going to cry and look somber and mm-hmm. they're going to do whatever well, the white people we vote for expect them to do. Well, you know, I'll take this from both of you guys. You're right. I mean, she's she's been went from a historical standpoint. The NAACP has been a very diverse group. Right. Big time. Right. Across the board, if you will. Sure. And women played a major role. Mm-hmm. Uh, white females and you know anybody, and black females. Right and whatever. You know, here, here in Portland, uh, that was one of the things that I was told. Uh, Alice Kellingsworth yeah. uh, was was one of the supporters of, um, which I think is fascinating. Mm-hmm. You know, but women basically ran the show. Oh, very much. So. Uh, here yeah. in Portland for yeah. the NWCP for yeah. for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't about the. Cause I, I would say I was. I agree with you, man. It, it's about the issues. It's always about the issues, if you will. She was very effective as far as the issues are concerned. And whenever you find someone that's effective in any organization, for that matter. Sure. And especially now with the media, the definition of media today, you got to sell that advertising. You know, know, it really sucks (laughs) is that she quit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I just have one thing? Sure, sure. Again, I I do want to say, no, it was not right in regard to not being of her own race, Mm -hmm, you know. mm -hmm. Uh, So the deception, yeah. She needed to be, um, uh, as as we would say, checked on that. Mm-hmm. But th- the venom that the particular news people up there went after her, mm-hmm. it was to destroy her character mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to remove her as an advocate. Mm-hmm. And if you really look at how things were, the NAACP up there has has been has tried to be as as vibrant and as uh, effective like in any other city, but in Spokane especially, yeah, pretty- it was needed for someone of her character mm-hmm. to be outspoken. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now that that voice has been silenced. Wow, wow, wow. Now, who's the new president? Any any thought, any idea? I, Did the media bring that point up? I don't, they, I don't, Did they bring I don't up a point about the vice president now taking the lead? No. Have you seen the vice president in Spokane? Well, guess you see, what? Bruce, this is why I feel bad that she stepped down. I think it shows. The, um, I don't think it's right that she did what she did. Mm-hmm. But like I said before, right now in Spokane, in Portland, we got fake gay people, we got <laughs> fake straight people. You know what I mean? What are we going to do? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I mean,. I think the main reason why they attacked her was her effectiveness, Mm -hmm. and had she not been effective, Mm -hmm. the white people there in Spokane, Washington, Mm -hmm. in power or in the media, would have left her alone. Mm -hmm. We would have never heard about her. Mm -hmm. They would have said, we're supporting her because she's doing God's work. Well, the thing is that, (laughs) you know, the the thing is, she's worked her way all the way up. Sure. I mean, what happened? Uh Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When she first appeared, she looked pretty white to me. Well, she was. I think she was, right? She was. Okay, I but mean, my point know. is that that's not issue. Right. The, the issue is that how do you respond to the issues that that uh, and our policies or whatever mm-hmm. and concerns that the NWACB had? Right. That's what she did. That was not the focus. The focus was the issues. Right. So put it in. And one last thing, because I know we're going to move on no problem. and Good stuff, enough. but uh, she had been married to a black man. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had kids. had two biracial kids. Mm-hmm. And up in that area, uh, 
they've done a good job to try not to be on the surface racist, but it really is still there, mm -hmm. like everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was hitting every affront she could do with certain people. She was hitting every affront yeah, that was right, there. Right, right, right. And you know, today, in all due respect, when they take the census now, uh, no one want to. In some cases, someone don't want to be black. Someone want to be white. Someone want to be Asian. Someone want to be, you know. And you and you can do. You can choose whoever you want to be now. True. Bottom line, you got to be an American. That's exactly what folks want to be. They want to be American so they can hey draw those bennies, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Okay, good. Well, all right. Uh, enough about said about that part. Now I'm going to read you a couple of definitions here. We get ready to get into this whole issue of this shooting piece and whatever, and and people throwing the, the table of race. Is on the table right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've said it on the show that when uh, when Obama was elected, uh, the, the side that I thought was was very much important was to talk about the issue of race. Sure. And just his president as president of the United States, he really was the president of the United States. We should be looking at the effectiveness of the of the deal. But the bottom line, race was a major factor, and this country needed to talk about the issue of race. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a couple couple of things here that I'm gonna read out for you guys and and to the public here. Let's see what we got here. What is it? I got I got here. Let's see. Race. Here's a definition of race from this dic little dictionary that I got here. It says race, a group of people linked by appearance. Hmm. Makes sense. What about uh, geographically locations? True. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is racism, discrimination based on race. So if you're a majority black in an area, guess who gets the hit? The other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Here's another one that I think you guys will like. Uh, it's a, it says, uh, now here's a terrorism. Terrorism. Violence committed to achieve a political end. Mm. Right in the middle of politics, right? Mm -hmm. Just violence committed to achieve a political end. Then I looked up political, and this is what I got from political. Relating to government or uh, politics or to the tactics for gaining power. Mm. Let's have the discussion. <laughs> okay, Fred, let's start off. What's, what's, what are you hearing about this? When this, when this issue, uh, as far as this shooting, of, if you will, of um, this young white male walking into a church uh, at a prayer meeting, and he, and he kills everybody. I mean, we, 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 I hope some, some of the folks don't even know this since this happened. But the whole idea is that uh, he, he shot up these folks. He killed, what, nine people? Killed nine. And, and, he, and one, one was alive, and it was just a young girl, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Plus the minister's uh, wife and daughter is in his office. Right. So they heard every shot. They heard every shot. Okay, good. And Probably. the kid knocked on their door. Wow, wow, wow. Let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. what, what, do you hear? what do you hear? Well, I hear. I know you've been doing. Well, first, I, I want to say it's you know, what's, what's very important about this shooting. Yeah. Is not just how black people react to it. I'm fascinated by how a lot of white people, mm -hmm. um, even some of my most diehard conservative friends, um, have been affected by by this shooting. Yeah. You know, my mom. I, I talked to my mom about it. You know, my mom is seventy, what seventy five years old. She grew up in Mississippi. Not far from where the the um, the three um, um, civil rights workers were killed. Not mm -hmm. far from there. Mm -hmm. That area is, is hateful. Mm -hmm. I never go down there without you know lots of ammo, lots of guns because <laughs> I don't like any of those people down there. Um, but my mom grew up there, so my, this stuff is normal. I mean, even though my yeah. mother's been out of Mississippi since the 1950s, the way my mother, uh, you know this. Uh, it's not like she didn't think it was bad. She mm -hmm. thinks it was horrible. Mm -hmm. But her emotions, mm -hmm. you know, are just so flat. Yeah. And I notice yeah. all the other old black people I've talked to. Yeah, you don't see that. Yeah. It's, their emotions are flat. Mm -hmm. But then you listen to them. They're going to tell you stories that make this one look look nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the stories my mother and grandfather and, and father mm -hmm. have told me about things that they faced and heard about and mm -hmm. dealt with growing up. Mm -hmm. I, like I was telling a lot of my white friends, I go, this is bad. This thing in South Carolina is bad, mm -hmm. but it's not even the worst right. that a lot of black people have grown up seeing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and dealing with. Mm -hmm. So you got the younger generation that this is the worst thing that's probably ever happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of white people 
who have never been exposed to this, they've maybe seen it in Mississippi Burning, right? And some yeah, and, right. and some uh, yeah. documentaries yeah. about you know it's all yeah. in black and white. Have, yeah. But this is in color. This is here, mm -hmm. and it's just so obscene mm -hmm. that uh, I think a lot of white people now are beginning to get a little bit clearer understanding. It, it sounds bad, but about black history. Yeah, yeah. About why, how black people are which approaching they, Which they don't get exposed to. Which they don't get exposed get to. Exposed. That's in, why in I keep school. telling my, yeah. a lot of my black friends, talk to your white friends. Mm -hmm. And I tell my white friends, start asking questions of black people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guarantee you five or ten minutes talking about old Mississippi with my mother, if you're not pissed, yeah. I mean very upset, within five minutes of my mother talking as mm -hmm. calmly as mm -hmm. about stuff that she saw. Mm -hmm. I bet your mother's the same way. Mm -hmm. I bet yeah. your mother got stories yeah. that would just, yeah, would just freak mm -hmm. you out. And I tell white people, when you meet black, black people like your mother, like my mother, like you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you'll get a little bit of understanding on a personal level, mm -hmm. you know, um, the documentaries don't do justice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's important to do. Right. But hearing a person talk about it mm -hmm. and tell you what they saw mm -hmm. and what they experienced. I mean, mm -hmm. my grandmother, who both of my grandmothers were gone, they I can remember them talking about lynchings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you and I talk about baseball games. Mm -hmm. Not that casually, but I mean, as far as they mm -hmm. were c celebrating black them, black but just yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got lynched, and sh she got lynched, and, mm -hmm. and you know, stuff well, Fred, like that. You know, you make a good point, but the thing is that here we've got an education system. Sure. Here in Portland, Portland Oregon, mm -hmm. it's not in the classroom. That history. What, what's what's the problem? Why well, why is it that history? It's the people is that not are running being... it. For, you know, we got a school district run by white people. Um, who don't care about black people unless they're having sex with them. And then those are the only black people they do care about. Mm -hmm. And then we got black people who just want to keep a job so they don't want to piss off those black, yeah, those white yeah, people. Buddy, yeah. We don't have any real influence in this town when it comes to black people, when it comes to the main right. issues of our lives. Education, um, politics, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Black people um, are secondary mm -hmm. to, to white people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when it comes to something what you're talking about, about kids learning about yeah, this, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the white people that are running our schools do not have enough meaningful relationships with black people to even comprehend how to approach the, uh, the issue. And they're annoyed when they feel people are complaining that they're not doing it. They feel like you're attacking them professionally, which we are, but they've got the power to make the change, mm -hmm. and they choose not to. When I think about this young guy that did this shooting, mm -hmm. remember the statement that he'd made? Sure. He was, trying to, he was saying, look here, it was, it's all about raping our women. And, That's right. And uh, talking about uh, trying to take over this country. That's and, right. And, and, and you hear these other pieces about uh, the white male's going to be extinct. Mm -hmm. you, know, you hear that now. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and you say to yourself, well, now, what if you took, that's why, I'm, that's why I read these pieces. Sure. About, but we, we, we're, we, we, are, uh, we are a diverse group here, mm -hmm. but we're all Americans. But the bottom line, that the entire slate of Americans should be taught in the schools. If, anyone, if, if, if they had gotten that education piece during the schools, I am saying you wouldn't have this warped mind as much as. You're still going to have 1% or 10% of the population that's going to continue to do what they're doing. Sure. But the fact of the matter is we don't have that education for black folks, for Hispanics, mm -hmm. for Asians. It's not part of the, the study. It's just not part of it. And it's insulting. And, you know, I've, I've had, as you know, I, I've had Steve, uh, Steve, Steve, Steve Buell. Steve Buell on the show many times. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of an activist in own, his own right. He's on, he sits on the Portland School Board. We, I bring up this issue. He brings up this issue. But again, it's the same old deal. Bruce, uh, they, 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 I just can't get them to see it. I just can't get them to see it. That's great to Man, look at the makeup of our school board. Oh. Do you really think those white people have very good relationships, Jeez. meaningful Jeez. relationships with, 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 uh, with black people? No. Look at when they run for office. Look at the black people that they have in their photos and their literature. Some of those black people don't even live in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, come wait, on. Wait, you know, you make a good point because when you think about it, I <laughs> think about this, and I've always slipped a little bit in regards to the, the school district, if you will, here in Portland aspect of it. There's no problem promoting the fact that the superintendent of Portland Public School is gay. They make it very clear. They promote it. No problem. But yet and still, you can't 
Now, remember now, these kids are coming up this way. Sure. They're coming up this way. Right. What about black folks? Can we veer just a second? That's a good thing, what you're saying. You got a point you want to make? Yes. And let's come back to this piece. Most, I'll say it this way. Most people who are in the majority mm -hmm. do not have that personal experience to understand what the the what Afro what African Americans have gone through mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, if it's not a relatable subject to me personally, okay. and I'm not black and I'm white, okay. Okay. I have no grid to really understand. Mm -hmm. What's teaching me is what I'm seeing on the news. Mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. and and therefore because of that, there is not a relatability. It doesn't affect my everyday life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, how can I respond in a way mm -hmm. that 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 would cause the changes needed for the Portland public schools to actually begin mm -hmm. to see these kinds of kids of all races. Mm -hmm taught differently on what racism really is mm -hmm. and how things are going. Mm -hmm. Now, Portland is different than many other cities because we're blessed mm -hmm. with a lot of what's called multicultural neighborhoods. Yes, yeah, right. Sure. Okay. Really? I, I'm just saying this. Yeah. Okay. Fred's going to come in. I'm just saying this. All right. Okay. okay. I didn't say it's true. All right. I'm just saying that's what's being brought, you know, brought across. They promote, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and yet... Even with that word multiculturalism, mm -hmm. which is from Europe, mm -hmm. it means the diverse, the diversity of people, and yet still controlled by the majority. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. with those kinds of things in 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 mind and in line, what you're going to find is that everything that is brought across educationally will have a particular slant. Now we know this, but most of our audience does not know this mm -hmm. that's true. okay that's true. and most people who are not black do not have the relatability that is needed right now to understand because the majority what, don't have the background that's it well right. the reason why they the don't books. have the background is they don't have yeah, it's not in the classroom well it's not just that they don't have the personal relationships in portland okay. in oregon yeah. with black people yeah. and that's Partly their fault and it's partly black people's fault. Now the other side, a lot of us black people don't make it easy for white people to be to be our friends. That's true. They don't. We got a lot of black people who live in Oregon who've got a chip on their shoulder about being black. You understand? But why is that so? Well, because what, what, what well, one, they're, they're cowards because they would never be well, like this in South Carolina. Okay, but you understand? It's one. I, I it's one thing be, having a chip on your shoulder being black in Portland, Oregon. Go down south, Mississippi. Alabama, South Carolina, you know what I'm talking about? Baltimore, go down there with that same chip. No, a lot of the a lot of these uh, people that are like that, they're, they're, they're doing the entire community, both black and white, a disservice. Mm -hmm. But if black people want to make things better, they're going to have to uh, learn how to allow white people to become friends. They're going to have to help. If they love their children they, and they want to make things better, they're going to have to learn how to, make, uh, to, to back off a little bit of any type of... Uh, of, of, of negative feelings they have toward white mm -hmm. people or fears they have toward mm -hmm. white people. Mm -hmm. And white people are going to have to make an effort too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those things, If it depends on how much better you want this world for your kids. Mm. Because for, I tell my white friends, the, the, the country is browning up. If you're having a kid today and he's under 10 years old, probably by the time they're our age, they're definitely not going to be living in a, in a power structure of this, com this country that's as white as it is today. And you, you well, want, that's a bad word. No, it's not a bad word. It's just the way the country is going. So if you want your child to be successful for the rest of their life, right, right. help them get this negativity and, out of the way. This negative energy of not okay. being able or not knowing how to relate or develop relationships with black people. Okay. Get that out of the way as children. Okay. As you can see, folks, we're going to have quite a discussion. We're going to take a short break here now, and, and we'll be back with the discussion. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. As you can see, we're having quite a discussion. For those of you who, who missed the first part, uh, you can pit up on, uh, uh, I think we got we got a Tuesday Tuesday shoot, reshoot on 23, and Channel 23, and then Friday on 22, okay? And then you got all YouTube. You can just go right direct to YouTube, Oregon Voter, and just, just Google it or whatever, and you can get it right there, right off the bat. In fact, uh, Fred's, Fred's already put it on Facebook, and they're looking at it right now, so to speak. Not this particular one, but the, the last shows. This one will also be on. Okay, we were, we were again talking about the, uh, the issue of how do we get inclusionary uh, in, uh, as far as all the races, for that matter, whether you're majority or minority. You know, inclusionary, that's another good word, if you will. And that is, that is probably lacking within our community across the board. But the other point I was saying, again, talking about Portland Public Schools, this is where we are. This is where we are here right now. Uh, the point of the matter is, uh, you know, we, we need to, to understand that the, the lack of inclusion mm -hmm. of other folks, there's, there's, uh, there's some specific inclusion that we include. And, I, and I, I'm not trying to be negative about the whole issue of gays and this, that, and the other. But the fact of the matter is they do make a point to promote and make sure that folks know about this. But the other most important mm -hmm. piece is that when, when we started off the program talking about the, the number, of Af uh, number of black folks that are in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. you think in the Portland Public Schools, outside the Portland Public Schools, there's voc ed. Mm -hmm. There's voc ed. Inside, here in Portland, at the Portland Public Schools, there's no voc ed, vo voc ed educational. Mm -hmm. They'll always go to Benson or something like that, but the fact of the matter is, I'm talking about the schools across the board. Mm -hmm. You got these young people have nothing to do. They have no reference, if you will, to know how to read. Mm -hmm. No, no, no motivation to want to read mm -hmm. because, in all due respect, you have to have some sense of reference. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, there's no auto mechanics, there's no carpentry, there's, there's no, well, there's, it just goes on and on. But we don't have voc ed here in this particular. Numbers. And again, that's other that Steve Buell and I've been talking about. Now, it's, it's my understanding that the Portland Public School Board is going to change a bit. It's not just one person up there basically actively talking about some of these issues. Now, there's, I, think it's, I think it's four to three now. Yeah, but you see, Bruce, even when it comes to vocad, I'm sure they're going to get better in vocad, but right. are they going to do in, increased investment in vocad where black people live, or are they going to do it at Jefferson where black people are leaving? Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm talking uh, about for all the school, all the kids. Well, throughout the board. they're not going to do it for, for, you know, for all the kids, Bruce. That's what I'm, what I'm pointing out. Uh, we don't have a leadership. Are us as voters, both black and white, yep. we're failing ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and to give you an example, how far we are from having leaders that are, are really advancing multiculturalism in our community as far as bringing the races together. I posted on my Facebook that I went to the Twitter accounts to our federal representatives mm -hmm. and some of our other politicians in right. the state, right? And most of them follow very few people because, you know, they get anywhere between 50,000 to 100,000 people following them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But so a lot of them will follow 700 or fewer people because they want to give more attention to these people. So these people are part of my policy. These people are yeah. part of my relationship. Extremely few black people yeah. are on, are being followed. Now, it's just Twitter. It's not a big deal. But the point is, yeah. I mean, when you've got, you know, a, a, a community so small. Yeah, you would think that the politician would say, "Well, I want to show my my constituents that there are black people that I know. There's yeah. black businesses yeah. that I do, yeah. you know, that I that I work with. Yeah. That I, I I communicate with Hispanics. I saw Hispanics on there. I even saw Asians uh, represented in there. Yeah, right. But, but what I didn't see, folks. I didn't see. Folks. Oh, they uh, they each had one or two, and it was fascinating too. If they had one or two, they weren't one or two from Oregon. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, from New York or, mm -hmm. or L.A. Or, or some other market. Mm -hmm. They don't have a deep, a deep connectivity with the right, black community right, right, right. Um, here. Not like what we had with Hatfield. I mean, mm -hmm. when, I, when I think of yeah, growing Mark, up in Portland, oh, Mark, awesome. about how often Mark Hatfield was in the black community and how many people personally knew him, you know what I mean, like personally knew who Mark Hatfield was, I mean, and I compare that today, you know, you ask how many black people in this town actually see Ron Wyden. Yeah. I mean, I like Ron Wyden. I've yeah, always voted yeah. for him. I ain't putting him down. But I'm saying, how in the world could Ron Wyden ever comprehend fully what the black community needs when he doesn't have really any meaningful black relationships? You look at his staff, 
Um, I don't think he's ever had a black chief of staff. What I'm getting to, he's never well, had I read a, a, right up front with you, I made that point because I thought I knew Ron, mm -hmm. and I made that point from the standpoint, give Loretta the opportunity, if you will, to serve as chief of staff. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give, give her some more experience, you know, back in Congress. But he, she never did. He, he never did that. And it, I'm really disappointed by, with him. Well, you see, that's, that that's what he, he didn't answer the question. But I remember, uh, gosh, back in 2010, somebody asked him, how can you endorse somebody to be on the county commission? And I think Loretta is oh, a she's nice a person. Yeah, she's, she's a nice person. Yeah, yeah. But that you could never that you never gave leadership in your own yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, that's, right. Yeah, um, that's right. But like I said, white people are going to be before you get before you get off that point. Then there's, there's then there's my friend Earl De Pearl, Earl Blumenauer. Yeah, you know, I've he, never heard a guy, of a black a person guy, working for him. But when you call his office, and I've called his office, hey, let's talk about the issue of voc ed and the mm -hmm. schools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the way they dismiss me in many ways. Well, Bruce, you're a Republican. You, you, you're a Republican. You know, you you don't you don't relate to uh, to us Democrats and this that and that. That's what that's the that's what I get from the office. And don't, don't get me wrong, I get the same thing in many ways uh, to some of my Republican. The, the 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 only only congressional elected official here in, the, in our state is the gentleman up in uh, I don't even want to <laughs> remember his name. Uh, yeah, but, but Bruce, but anyway, but it still goes Greg into Walton, Greg, the main reason why they treat you the way they do. Yeah. Is they know that it won't offend. I don't have the numbers, right? Well, yeah, it won't offend enough black people. That's right. Yeah, in other words, every black person could hate yeah. how Earl Blumenauer treats you yeah. and commit to voting against Earl Blumenauer. Yeah. And guess what? <laughs> he will win by ninety plus that's percent. Right. That's right. That's right. And no, that's why I tell my white friends if they want to see changes in this area, the white people out there who really feel there needs to be changes in this area mm -hmm. and that their leadership that they vote for should reflect this. They're going to have to make it a point. Right. The people they vote for are not going to make it a point. Okay. The people we, that we vote for do not feel black people in Oregon matter. They just don't want to do anything outwardly racist, like accidentally say the N word, you know what I'm talking about, or be disparaging in any mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they want to play it safe. But they, they're really not interested in engaging in a meaningful way with black people in Oregon. Mm -hmm. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm always saying on Facebook and on here, we need to ask our white friends and family. Mm -hmm. You know, we need you. If, if we're going to get to the next step in, in race relations, it's not going to happen in Oregon from anything black people do other than being open-minded and willing to communicate and engage. But don't you think the word education sort of solves that problem to a certain degree? Bruce, as the white as, people as that we vote for control what goes into our educational yeah. system. That's what I'm trying to say. Our school board is all white people, yeah. okay? Uh, most of those white people, unless they've had sex with them, have next to no relationship with black mm -hmm. people. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, next to no, none. But I'm, then some blacks have been uh, elected, but again, like you said, they picked them, if you will. You got me? You, you had Margaret Carter, you know, and she's since retired. You've had Abel Gordley. She was out in the office. We've got Jackie Winters that are sitting right now. She's a Republican. But sure. She's sitting up there in the, in the Senate. Uh, I mean, I, I, you got Lou Frederick, you know, who's, who's there now. And I mean, but where was that support? You, you're saying to me that they were never supported any, well, even taken serious. Well, at, collectively, okay. collectively, right. list the most important things all of those black leaders have done in Oregon to help make racial relations better, to help in education, black people get e equal, to help white people learn how to help us, how mm -hmm. to not be as racist, mm -hmm. how to do anything. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Margaret Carter, her record is, I mean, a hundred years from now, they're going to be making fun of us because of her. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, 20 years in the legislature, it was an absolute waste. You know, 500, over 500 dead young black men and, you know, total waste of time. You know, um, Avril DeGorley did a little bit better. The best legislator that's black we've ever had is Lou Frederick. And he hasn't been able to do that much. Yeah, he yeah. pretty much can only do stuff that Chip Shields lets him do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of... Well, let, let's not forget one other, too, by the way. And, and when you think about all these young, with, with these young African-American male, black males that sit in the criminal justice system, the thing that comes to mind is, is Head Start. Right. And we got, we got uh, Ron Herndon, mm -hmm. who's president of Head Start, here, located right here in Oregon, in mm -hmm. Portland, Oregon. 
And uh, I've always felt very strong about the fact that he, there was some leadership there, and, but they never picked him, if you will, to be a senator or right. a representative yeah, because or he a wanted, congressperson. He wanted the money. No, 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 no. But I'm on point that he still could have been picked, just like they picked <laughs> no, him up. No, he wanted the money. No, yeah, He's a Reed but College is, educated man from a very intelligent family. Yes. He no, he wanted the money. No, I mean, look at I mean, I'll to his story. Most of those 500 black guys have been murdered. Guess where they were at when they were little kids? Head Start. Albina Head Start. Right. You know, we didn't have black men. I mean, I, I'm not blaming it on him. No. But I, I actually think it's fascinating. W when Portland didn't know about Ron Herndon, back when he was just pissing off Steve Jobs, we didn't have black people killing people like this. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets in the Head Start, and the first generation of kids he gets in the Head Start, what's the first thing they start doing? Blowing us away. Hmm. You know, I don't think he's part of it, but I just think the timing is very unique. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. As as a man of the cloth, mm -hmm. when I'm hearing everything that's being uh, uh, commented on, we've made a great error as as black people in depending on the political aspect and not mm -hmm. bringing in the moral aspect and bringing reigning in our black leaders politically as well as mm -hmm. and i'm speaking against myself as a black minister mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as well as black ministers cleaning their own self mm -hmm. and their own issues uh -huh. up come on now and yep. beginning yep. to address the issues that are much needed uh, if you are a politician if you're in the senate here or or you're in in washington or you're in the state or even in the state legislature, if there's not a unified group of faith and civic mm -hmm. and business people mm -hmm. that that won't come collectively together and address the issues that mm -hmm. would change the education, mm -hmm. that that would bring, notice I say, a reasonable mm -hmm. uh, proposal to change, not only for our, our, our young black men, mm -hmm who, when they do come out of the correctional thing, have right. a five right. or 10 year right. plan, come on, to yeah. bring them back right. into right. Right. being a, a, right. a decent citizen. Right. Uh, there has got to be mm -hmm. uh, a revolution or, 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 or reformation first. Among Americans. Among Americans, but even more amongst the church. The church, right, the church. To begin to address such issues mm -hmm that could change from the inside first because okay. we keep looking for legislation when people on the inside mm -hmm. with which this young man was in south carolina mm -hmm. it's the inside that was rotten mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that inside manifested with killing nine innocent yeah, studying bible college that's it here Excuse in, me. in one of the areas that the, uh, that our church and our black leaders up to this point have failed not just portland as far mm -hmm. as black portland sure but mm -hmm. the state is the drug war affected the black community in Oregon mm -hmm. in the 1980s harder than anybody else. It's that the way nationwide. But since we're so small, mm -hmm. it was more intimate. Mm -hmm. It was in our, it was like in your face. It wasn't like it is down in LA yeah. where you've got millions of black folks. Have you noticed that none of our black leaders, including the church, I'm not trying to, no, 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 negative, no, say it. Ever took on the drug war here in Portland. Oh. If, the, if the black community, the black leaders, Ron Herndon and all those other guys, had back in the 1980s taken on the drug war and maybe even highlighted to white Oregon what the drug war was even doing to them, That's to true. their young people, mm -hmm. you understand? We wouldn't have the level of violence that we have in Oregon today, today. that we today. have. That's why a guy like me... Like I said, I, I'm not going to go throwing no chairs or anything mm -hmm. like that, but there's certain black leaders I just can't be around. Mm -hmm. Because when I think of the 500 plus black, dead black people in, in, in my community, mm -hmm. do you understand? And understand that part of the reason those people are dead is their failure mm -hmm. and their comfort mm -hmm. with failing the community. Mm -hmm. Then you double that. It's not just black people they failed. Mm -hmm. They failed Portland. Yeah. They failed white people mm -hmm. because Oregon should have been the state leading the charge oh, yeah, against the drug so. war. That's right. So. Right now, right now, I don't know why Lou Frederick and those others aren't beating the hell out of me, having press conferences about the lack of support yeah. they've had so far, or not enough support they've had so far, for uh, backing out a, a lot of these convictions 
and stuff like that that people have had for marijuana in the past. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That's right. That's I mean, right, that's right. right now, yep. that should, that's, that's, that's we, should be we're about ready in, like in two weeks exactly. to legalize marijuana. Exactly. And completely bring destruction. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. And, and, and we need to, to go ahead and, and maybe Kate Brown's plan on doing it. Maybe she's going to surprise us and well, pardon everybody. It's, it's being said she, right now. You know, she could. It's being said, yeah. But the thing is, the, the leadership of black Oregon, yeah. leadership of black Portland, the drug war yeah. should have been their, their number yeah. one Talk issue to defeat because that was the number one issue that was holding us back. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. then I look at all the people that people call black leaders today, you <laughs> know, and I'm like, wow. You know, I mean, look at the last 30 years. Ron Herndon, a bunch of head start. How many of those 550 young black men and women who are in the ground right now, how many of them we're in Albina Head Start. Uh, Very interesting because, in all due respect, the, the definition of Head Start before that Head Start aspect of it, it was in the black churches. Mm -hmm. Head Start was in the black churches. Yeah. yeah. And they were being taught. Though that generation of, 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 head, of uh, head Start kids, when they got out of Head Start, they didn't go kill another black kid. Yeah. Isn't, yeah. isn't that kind of fascinating? Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Well, folks, this is this is been, well. Let's see. One of the issues we want to throw out on the table is the whole issue of the gun issue. Look like that's being thrown back on the table, if you will. And let's comment a little bit about that. You know, the, uh, it has been said that uh, guns were responsible for this deal. We shouldn't have it in our presence, and, and this impact on black folks. Talk about it, Brent. Well, I was telling you guys earlier when you brought it up, Bruce. That back in, the, if, you know, if you're into Portland history like I am, because I, you know, I love learning more I about you Portland. Do. You know, there was a time where, you know, uh, criminals didn't like to use guns because they knew two things. One, a gun in your hand just meant you're going to get your butt kicked once the cops get you, <laughs> all the way, to, whether you're white or black. You're right. going to get your ass kicked. And Don and I talked about this. All the I'm way to the, the jail. Right. You're going to get a longer time in jail. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. You, it would just, but you know what they Anybody. did instead? Bombs. Portland had a lot of bombing going on in the 30s, 40s, and 50s in this town. If a guy wanted to get rid of you, he, I mean, gosh, even at the Columbia Edgewater, back in the 1950s, a woman decided she was upset with her husband cheating on her. What did she try to do? She blew him up. Not try to do. She blew her husband up in the parking lot at the Columbia Edgewater Country Club, the old club. You know, so, you know, people who are against guns, I can understand why they're upset, mm -hmm. the ease of guns and stuff like that, but what would you rather face? A person who can go on the internet and, you know, with a few kitchen products, make a, a bomb, you know, a pipe bomb? <laughs> or do you want a guy that, you know, has to have a, a gun? I mean, at least you can run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with a bomb, you're not going to run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would hope that you not have to face either one. Uh, yeah, me too. I right. hope you don't face right, either right, one right, either. Right, right, right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. you know, which devil do you do, do yeah. you want? Yeah. You sure. know, I mean, I, I don't want either one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it, it, you know, in that whole situation, where where the kid's father, yeah, gave him the gun at at the legal age of twenty one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they, they learned he didn't do it. Huh? They learned that he bought the gun himself. The father the did. The no, kid. the kid. Oh, the kid did. The kid did. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Correct. Yeah. No. No. They, they was that was up. And they they corrected it just yesterday or last night. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, they, but that's what the narrative was up until like last night. But they verified uh, that he bought the gun himself. That's what, what I understand. that's what I heard, saw on CNN last night. Hmm. I guess he had been in trouble with the police twice. Mm -hmm. So you would think that the laws there are pretty strict in South Carolina in, in regard to if you've had trouble with the police. For him to, I mean, even more that even brings the case. Mm -hmm. When he went to buy the gun, if they did a background check, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it should have been immediate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he got in trouble. So, you know, I would have really actually hoped that those who were discussing this issue would have waited until after the funerals, would have given time for the families to grieve. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then brought this issue up because. By doing that, by by bringing that issue up right away, it kind of takes away from what I believe the nation needs to do right now mm -hmm. is to actually grieve with those nine families mm -hmm. right now. Reverend Cummins, what comes to my mind about what you're saying is, you as a minister, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the fact that he almost didn't do it 
because he said the people were so good to him. He was there a full hour. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Before yeah. he yeah. killed him, and he said to the cops, he almost didn't do it. Yeah. Because the people welcomed him so much. Yeah. That's right. Which means his heart was being touched, yet he yet Not he enough. made the decision. So even though we're talking on politics and mm -hmm. we're talking on social issues, that that spirit, and I will say it, that spirit of evil was there. Mm -hmm. Not just that he had education of evil. Mm -hmm. Come on now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but but that very moment of of decision when his conscience was saying mm -hmm. you shouldn't do this, he decided to listen to that which is evil. Mm -hmm. well, let's and get back to. Book. I want to go back to the guns thing and think mm -hmm. in terms of uh, some of the things that have been taken out of our society with reference to trying to educate our young folks. I mean, the educational system with reference to guns and weapons. Mm -hmm. I can recall, I can, I can, I think back my, during my time when I was going to school in Texas, in Houston, Texas, I was a member of ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps. Mm -hmm. And I learned the respect, if you will, of guns because, you know, we had competition and this, that, and the other. And I knew what that was all about. Naturally, that helped me out in the Marine Corps because I did well along that line. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the other side is that, uh, but when you come to Portland, Oregon, ROTC exists outside of the city of Portland. But they got it at the University of Portland. No, I said Portland. I'm talking about high school. I'm, oh. talking, about, I'm talking about here within mm -hmm. our midst, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And, uh, and there's a lot to be said. It's a reserve officer training. Sure. You understand what I'm saying? So my point is that I had that opportunity. Again, the kids don't have that opportunity. You know what I mean? And then the other thing about guns aspect of it is that um, some of the kids that were borderline, if you will, uh, in, in, during the time that I was here as a Marine recruiter, Mm -hmm. We had expungement, mm. so meaning that uh, uh, if a person that maybe maybe smoked a joint or ripped off something or this, that, and the other, uh, and gets before the judge when going through the probate, because I worked that particular system, he said, okay, fine, uh, Gunny, I was a gunnery sergeant at that time, and says, okay, Gunny, what do you think about this? We'll take a recess. I'd go in the back, check the young, young man out, and if everything looks pretty good, and a female. Got right. it? And that's what I'd look at. Our probation officer would give me a call. I'd take him, I'd, I'd go on and run him through the process. They get into the service. They got a whole new life. Some of these young people that I put in were lo are lawyers today, policemen. Right. I mean, just working, they got families the whole night. Sure. So we've taken that out of our system. So I'm, bring, I'm putting that back on the table when I say guns and probably other things too. Portland Public Schools could use those, those, benny, those bennies. They could use the ROTC, but it's all at the same time. I'm talking about kids across the board who sure. are borderline. We need that expungement back to the table. We need the draft back. That's what well, we need is. something to, 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 allow, to allow kids to be involved, not always in the military. I mean, I agree with you that we need to. But look, some could use that, though. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, some I mean, could use that, too. And I mean, they can't do it, but I'd love to see something along the lines that looks like a Peace Corps. Uh, not necessarily send them overseas, but maybe something well, they, they can that. do they here in the that, state yeah. or somewhere in the United States. But the Peace Corps have to go to college. You know, you, you can't. I'm only friend. I'm only talking about that element that we have a major concern with now that we're pointing out. That's all I'm saying. I know. Sure. But no, I'm and just agreeing. We're identified with you. and saying, okay, fine. They're in the criminal justice system, and just like Matt was saying, you know, okay, fine. Supposedly. You, you do the crime, you do the time, you come back out, and you, you're never accepted once you get in the criminal justice system. True. You see what I'm saying? True. So, so, so something has to be done, and that's what I'm trying to react. It's not a quote, let's go on and have war, war, war. We're doing drone. We're droning now. <laughs> we're not even doing the. Go on. I know that we're almost at the end, but I just want yeah, to say it would be wonderful if a program could be set up just like what you both have just been talking yeah. about, where where high school kids do go into a two or three year program sure, sure. here in sure. Portland in sure. the city sure. as well as here here in the state of Oregon. Sure. So look look the, the, the idea is that we need to be able to offer our youth options. I agree. Everyone is not designed if you will to go into the military or at the Peace Corps or whatever. You know, it depends upon the educational level at some point in time. Sure. But the one thing about that so called military, everybody has a job. Yeah, everybody true. has a job. So after they get through doing that particular time in the service, they are definitely more than qualified, if you will, to, to get place, if you will. You. And the same thing with the Peace Corps and the like, and getting involved in the bachelor, et cetera. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, we're, we're right at the two-minute mark at this point in time, and then I'd like to make a, a lasting comment again to our fathers again. And, you know, and mm -hmm. let's just go around the room again and just uh, make a, uh, another statement or two or whatever about Father's Day.
Fred, real well, quick. I right. just want to wish everybody out there, all my friends and family out there uh, that are fathers, happy Father's Day. And that goes not just for fathers, but it also goes for grandfathers. As well for all fathers and grandfathers and those whom are in need of mentoring. Mm -hmm. Those who are mentors who are in that father's role as well. Happy Father's Day to you. And I'd like to say happy Father's Day to those individuals who are incarcerated, especially those, those black men that are out there, that, that they have families out here. And uh, I wish them a happy Father's Day and to any, everyone else, and, all, and especially to my sons, to Eric and, and Stefan, who's in California. Eric is here. And also uh, uh, my, my other son, Mike, who's in, in California. So I wish them all happy Father's Day and happy Father's Day to everyone. We really appreciate that very much. Again, this has been very enlightening. You guys have done a good job. I hope the uh, those of you who are who are viewing this this if you this show, hey, as, as Fred said, t was it to text it out or was it Facebook it out? Get it out yep. to your neighbors. Facebook it and have discussions about these issues. Mm -hmm. Sit down and talk about it. Talk to your neighbor. You know, talk to anybody and everybody. We've got a problem here. We gotta we gotta resolve this problem. We're right in the midst of politics, as I said. We're right in the mix of politics. Ask those individuals who are looking at running for office. Ask them those questions. To ask them to give you a solution. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Fred will probably consider running for, for a minute. Maybe he might, maybe not. not. But he, I think he'd be an excellent you'd be an ex excellent candidate, if you will, because we definitely need leadership. And that's what we're talking about right now. Again, thank you very much for being a part of what we've been doing here now. And, uh, and hopefully you will enjoy your Father's Day. This is the day, the, the, the last part of it, and wish... Your, your, your loved ones, if you will, happy Father's Day. And also to those women who are also fathers, unfortunately, today. But again, happy Father's Day to them, too. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care. You know, thank you.